Of all of the known planets in our universe, why is Earth the only one fit for life? The answer is really quite simple, because Earth appears to be the only planet that has a surface that supports vast amounts of liquid water, the mystical elixir, essentially required by all living things. About 70% of the planet is covered in ocean, and the average depth of the ocean is several thousand feet. 98% of all the water on the planet is in the oceans. About 2% of the planet's water is fresh, flowing through our rivers, lakes, and underground aquifers. The rest of the water on the planet is either floating in the air as clouds and water vapor, or is locked up in plants and animals. We humans, and all life on Earth, are aqueous beings. Our bodies are 50 to 70% water. Our cells are made mostly of a water solution packaged in membranes. The aqueous chemistry in these cells is responsible for growth, reproduction, and life. Water's chemical properties and the way it responds to changes in temperature make it an ideal medium for biological activity, so much so that it is considered absolutely essential for recognizable life. In addition to its direct role in biology, water is also a predominant determinant in the geology, geochemistry, and climate cycles of our planet. The evolutionist would say that water has been involved in life since its first appearance on the early primordial Earth. They claim that the first three billion years of the evolutionary drama of life on this planet was played out entirely in aquatic environments. Without these aquatic environments, the theory of evolution as it is stated today would be absolutely impossible. So how did Earth's unique aquatic environment conveniently present itself to be the mother of all life? all two million or more species of life and why only on this planet while it is theorized that small amounts of water in the form of ice may exist in varying amounts on other planetary bodies there are no known planets or otherwise that have even a lake of water much less vast and deep oceans and seventy percent coverage of the entire planet only earth has water like this as far as we know it is an astounding separating factor between Earth and every other planetary body. It seems highly improbable that there would be only one planet in the entire known universe that would have almost 70% coverage of water in liquid form. Yet, here it is, and we live on it, and the evolutionist doesn't have a clue as to its origins. The Wikipedia article on the topic of the origin of water is heavily referenced from purely pro-evolution resources. It begins as follows. The question of the origin of water on Earth, or more accurately put, the question of why there is clearly more water on the Earth than on the other planets of the solar system, has not been clarified. The Living Cosmos, in an article titled The Origin of Water on Earth, says it like this. So if Earth is unique because of its ready supply of water, how did the water get here? It turns out there is no simple answer to this question. The exact origin of water on Earth is still unknown. The fact that the origin of water is unknown and thus far unexplainable with any scientific credibility certainly does not disprove evolution and origins theory in and of itself. But the conundrum is this. Origins theory absolutely demands and depends upon the presence of water, and lots of it, along with billions of years and some pretty magical things happening in that water over billions of years in order for their evolutionary life to appear. Isn't it convenient for the evolutionists that the magical elixir necessary for their theory just happens to be present in vast amounts on our planet, but only our planet? Isn't it inconvenient that he has no idea where this water came from. So the evolutionist will demand that origins and evolution proposition is fact. They will demand that it be taught in public schools to the exclusion of anything else, especially intelligent design theory. They will insist that if you don't believe their magical theory, that you are uneducated and ignorant. Yet the origins of the foundation for their proposition of the appearance of life, water, cannot even be accounted for. The foundation for the beginning of their whole premise is unexplainable. 
the foundational key ingredient for the whole of life and life processes is of completely unknown origin. Again, why is intelligent design so far outside the realm of scientific possibility? Could the planet not have been designed to hold vast amounts of water so that life could be created and sustained? Certainly, it could have. That is quite a logical and scientific conclusion as well. It also seems quite logical that if naturalistic origins and evolution were indeed a fact, statistically, there would be many observable planets with vast amounts of the elixir of life. Yet there are none known to date that even come close to our unique planet. Yet the evolutionist, who cannot even begin to explain how vast amounts of water, the foundational necessity for any life, got here, and only here in the first place, the evolutionist will insist that he is absolutely correct and you are absolutely wrong. What an embarrassing conundrum.